aus Rheinland-Pfalz. Einige von Ihnen werden jetzt gleich noch äh, namentlich und im Detail vorgestellt werden. Mein Name ist Rainer Emich. Ich bin hier an der Gutenberg-Universität in Mainz Professor für englische Literatur und Kulturwissenschaft. Und da sehen Sie schon äh, in gewisser Weise äh, interessante äh, Abweichung, denn wir feiern hier heute Abend den Vorabend des St. Andrews Day, des schottischen Nationalfeiertags. Äh, ich werde diese kurze Ansprache kurz halten und zweisprachig halten, auch für die englischen, äh, äh, englischsprachigen Gäste, schottischen Gäste. Sie sehen, es ist ein dauerndes äh, Problem. Wir haben ein besonders enges Verhältnis zu Schottland hier in Mainz, das sich über Jahrzehnte entwickelt hat. Wir haben schon lange hier Forschung über Schottland mit besonderen Schwerpunkten in der Romantik bei äh, äh, Sir Walter Scott. Aber wir haben auch sehr intensive Beziehungen zu den schottischen Universitäten und wir sind die einzige Universität, nicht nur in Deutschland, sondern wie wir glauben weltweit, die in jedem vierten Semester eine Vorlesung über Schottland anbietet und in den anderen drei Semestern jeweils eine über Irland, Wales und Großbritannien und sein ehemaliges Empire und was davon übrig geblieben ist. Insofern sind uns die Beziehungen innerhalb der britischen Inseln sehr, sehr wichtig und auch die zukünftigen Beziehungen zwischen äh, den verschiedenen Teilen der britischen Inseln mit Deutschland. Wir schicken äh, im Rahmen eines GET-Programms äh, deutsche Lehramtsstudierende äh, nach Schottland, um dort Deutsch zu unterrichten. Aber wir empfangen auch regelmäßig schottische Studierende hier, die nicht nur den deutschen Universitätsalltag kennenlernen, sondern auch an Schulen gehen, beispielsweise auch in Flüchtlingsprojekte gehen, beispielsweise auch im Ahrtal sich umschauen, was da äh, passiert ist. Und wir verbinden das alles mit aktuellen politischen äh, und gesellschaftlichen äh, und wissenschaftlichen Themen. Im Moment ist es die Erderwärmung äh, und äh, die Konsequenzen, die uns hier ähm, sehr beschäftigen. Ähm, I'll say the same thing uh, in English now, and I'll welcome uh, colleagues, dear colleagues, dear students, and dear guests from both Scotland and Rhineland Palatinate, especially uh, the ones from politics and culture, uh, some of whom will be welcomed in detail and in person in a minute, um, to the Gutenberg University here in Mainz, where we traditionally have had very, very strong Uh, relations with um, Scotland that have grown over the decades. And we're celebrating, of course, tomorrow, which is the Scottish National Holiday, St. Andrew's Day. We're interested in Scotland in terms of teaching and in terms of research. We have a particular emphasis on uh, Scotland in the Romantic era with Sir Walter Scott being one of the key figures there. Uh, but we also pride ourselves on being the only university, not only in Germany, but as far as we know worldwide, that uh, teaches uh, a survey lecture on Scotland every fourth semester. And in the other three semesters, we teach Wales, Ireland, and what we call with big inverted commas, global Britain, which basically means uh, Britain before, during and after its empire. Um, we're also interested in exchanges with um, Scotland. We have a GET program that sends uh, German students who are training to be teachers to Scottish primary schools to teach German there. And there's a dire need of this uh, with the provision of foreign languages in the British Isles. We also welcome Scottish students to Mainz, not only to integrate them into university life, but also to show them schools or refugee projects or the Ahrtal. Uh, and uh, in this connection, we're very interested in contemporary issues in politics, in culture uh, and in science, for instance, global warming and its consequences. With all of this in mind, I hand over to the person who's really doing the work here, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Privatdozentin uh, uh, Sigrid Rieberts, who has been honored for her work uh, on Scotland and with Scotland uh, by the Constanzer Conceals Prize, by the Verdienst Landesverdienst the Landesverdienstorden Rhineland Palatinate only recently. So uh, she's been uh, widely acknowledged for her work. And of course, she always has uh, plans. Uh, and I'm sure she'll share some of these plans with you <laughs> now and if you like later on as well. I wish you um, a very interesting evening of short speeches. Mine is nearly finished. Um, of music. <laughs> 
uh, and some culture and of drinks and some nibbles afterwards. And of course, the main point of this is not only to get you here, uh, to have you stare at the front of the stage, but also for you to mingle and talk later on. So enjoy the evening. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rainer, uh, also director for the Scotland Hub that has been inviting you for the University of Mainz. And it's my task to really welcome you. This is the first time I believe that we have uh, the national uh, holiday, the national day for Scotland, St Andrews, here at uh, in Rheinland-Pfalz. So let me stay with Rheinland-Pfalz and not Rheinland-Palatinate. I think I prefer Rheinland-Pfalz, um, just as difficult to pronounce in English. So Rheinland-Pfalz. Um, but last year we had it um, in the Landesvertretung in Rheinland-Pfalz. It was a great success um, celebrating in Berlin. And we thought, since we are officially your partner, Scotland, we would like to celebrate that from now on also in Rheinland-Pfalz. And we signed the agreement, as well, Vince will probably tell you in a moment, in 2021. So this is the first time we actually have the chance to celebrate with you Scotland's National Day. And as you can see from the banner you just uh, passed on the way in, we plan for the future. So this is not going to be our last St. Andrew's Day in Rheinland-Pfalz, I hope. So I'm very pleased indeed. In fact, I'm absolutely delighted that Ministerin Binz could come today for the Ministry for Culture, who has been so much supporting us uh, with all this, especially this year with the Kultursommer, where we have seen so many of the events. Um, and thanks also to Staatssekretär Hadek, who is here, and to Herr Stiefenhofer and in absentia, uh, Tenika Beckers uh, from the Kultursommer, who have been generously funding the Scott Fest, but also about seven or eight events in Rheinland-Pfalz, uh, from Iona Five concerts in the Mosul uh, to um, English um, and uh, especially Scottish and Irish saints going down in the um, uh, Rheintal, basically, also in the old cathedral in Bechtheim and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for all your support in the past. And of course, we are very happy that you announced recently that the Scott Fest will also see uh, some funding from the ministry. So we are very, very pleased uh, that uh, uh, the Ministry for Culture takes Scotland so seriously and that we just fill it with life together. So perhaps we could just give a round of applause for everybody involved. Thank you. <laughs> So we wouldn't be here without our Oberste Schottin, as we'd like to call you, Catherine. Catherine Reeves is the new director for the Scottish Government in Berlin. Thank you for coming all the way from Berlin, despite the fact that you have another St. Andrew's Day celebration on St. Andrew's Day itself in Berlin. Um, but you promised to come back again. So this is only the first 24 hours in Rheinland-Pfalz. I'm glad you found it on the map and that you made it here. And uh, so a uh, warm welcome. The warmest of welcomes, you say, for Scotland, the warmest of welcomes for Rheinland-Pfalz. Thank you to Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Can I also thank our artists in residence, uh, Dr. Jenny Sturgeon, for coming back to us. You've been nominated as our Scotland Fellow, the first um, University of Mines Scotland uh, Fellow. Um, and uh, we are very, very pleased to have you here. We heard you at the last Scott Fest, and I can promise you she will come back end of June. And we are in the process of uh, doing uh, research also with a, um, in the Pfalz um, on Go Vals. So next year is Go Mensch. So watch this space. Thanks for Jenny for coming back all the way from Shetland and this time by train. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to cut it short a little bit. And of course, I would like to thank uh, Professor Rotloff uh, coming to us here for the president and uh, for the Presidium and speaking to us later on, our uh, Chief Information Officer. If you haven't met him before, uh, Professor Rotnauf is here going to talk to us. Thank you very much for representing the university and all my colleagues, in, including Rainer and, and um, others from the university who have been taking part in the GO projects and everything. And of course, my whole team, uh, especially Dominic Valerius, um, who is uh, in charge of this event today, and the whole team. Thank you very much for organizing it all. Thank you. 
And last but not least, what would a university be without students? Uh, so I think the power we have with the Scotland Hub is really the power of the students who have been to Scotland, who have returned uh, here and have brought a love of Scotland to Rhineland Falls. I think you are the ones we really do this for. And uh, thank you very much for turning out in great numbers and all the ones who are wearing a kilt, a special welcome as well. And for all the ones who would like to wear a kilt, welcome here as well. Thank you. Um, before I, before I now hand over to the speakers, um, it is, of course, my great honor uh, to welcome everybody who is watching us, um, and particularly from Edinburgh, we're going to hear our neue deutsche Generalkonsulin, uh, Frau Hulmann, in a moment. Um, and uh, we have a number of uh, people watching us, and thanks you also, especially to Lea Steinebrei in Glasgow, who actually sent us the master plan for tonight from Glasgow. So we are really working with both offices here. Thank you, Lea. Whenever you're listening, we're for you. Um, so coming back to here, it's a great honor for me to introduce our minister, Katharina Prince. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sehr geehrter Herr Professor Rotlauf, dear Mrs. Reeves, <laughs> sehr geehrte Frau Generalkonsulin Hullmann, sehr geehrte Frau Röwerts, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Freundinnen und Freunde Schottlands, es ist für mich immer als ehemalige Studentin der Uni Mainz äh, immer wieder besonders hierher zu kommen und dann hier in der alten Mensa auch selbst zu sprechen. Das ist immer eine ganz besondere Situation. Und ich erinnere mich vor allen Dingen auch sehr, sehr gerne zurück an äh, viele Abende als Studentin, die wir hier die Burns Night gefeiert haben, genau in diesem Raum. Das hat hier ja auch über viele Jahre stattgefunden. Und deshalb ist es heute Abend wirklich ein ganz schöner Anlass, wieder hier zu sein und eine ganz große Ehre mit Ihnen gemeinsam heute eben den Vorabend des Deutschen Nationalfeiertags zu feiern und vor allen Dingen auch die Partnerschaft zwischen Schottland und Rheinland-Pfalz zu feiern, denn darum soll es ja heute Abend auch gehen. Und der Scotland Hub der Universität Mainz ist da wirklich ein ganz angemessener, hervorragender Ausrichter, denn er ist eben seit 1981 der Dreh- und Angelpunkt der rheinland-pfälzisch-schottischen Beziehungen. Das kann man, glaube ich, wirklich so sagen. Und äh, dass Sie, Frau Reeves, ähm, heute, wir haben es gerade äh, gehört, ähm, zum ersten Mal nach Rheinland-Pfalz gekommen sind, ihren Antrittsbesuch ausgerechnet heute Abend gemacht haben, am Vorabend des schottischen Nationalfeiertags. Das zeigt eben auch äh, die besondere Bedeutung unserer Freundschaft zwischen Schottland und Rheinland-Pfalz. Und ich freue mich wirklich auch sehr, dass Sie hier sind und darf Sie auch ganz, ganz herzlich im Namen der Landesregierung zum ersten Mal in unserer Landeshauptstadt begrüßen. Herzlich willkommen. Ja. Schottland, Schottland und Rheinland-Pfalz sind geografisch vielleicht äh, weit voneinander entfernt, könnte man sagen, aber uns verbindet dann doch viel, viel mehr, als man vielleicht auf den ersten Blick hindenkt. Nicht nur teilen sich unsere Nationalgetränke, wobei man natürlich bei Rheinland-Pfalz nicht wirklich von Nationalgetränk sprechen kann, unsere Signature Drinks, <lacht> ähm, Whisky und Wein, den Anfangsbuchstaben, uns verbinden eben auch ganz viele gemeinsame Werte. Und uns verbindet ein gemeinsames kulturelles Erbe. Denken wir zum Beispiel an die vielen keltischen Zeugnisse, die es eben auch hier bei uns in Rheinland-Pfalz gibt. Und uns verbindet vor allen Dingen auch etwas ganz Besonderes. Das ist nämlich die Liebe zu einem in Vielfalt vereinten Europa. Und auch das Bewusstsein dafür, wie wichtig Europa für uns als Region, für die Zukunft unserer Region auch wirklich ist. Und deshalb pflegen Rheinland-Pfalz und Schottland eben seit vielen Jahren schon einen engen Austausch und gerade nach dem Brexit wollen wir den natürlich nicht nur weiterführen, sondern wir wollen ihn eigentlich auch intensivieren, weil wir eben wissen, wie wichtig Europa, wie, wie wichtig Zusammenarbeit in einem friedlichen, geeinten Europa für uns alle ist. Und deshalb gibt es eben bereits eine ganz große Zahl an Kooperationen, an Verbindungen auf akademischer Ebene, auf kultureller Ebene, natürlich auch auf wirtschaftlicher Ebene. Und das alles sind ganz, ganz wichtige Brücken für diese wirklich lebendige Verbindung. Schottland ist etwa bei den Hochschulkooperationen unser wichtigster englischsprachiger Partner. Und ähm, es ist eben auch schon angesprochen worden, auch äh, 
die Feierlichkeiten zum St. Andrews Day sind heute nicht das erste Mal in Rheinland-Pfalz auch Thema, sondern bereits im letzten Jahr fanden sie in Berlin statt, in der Landesvertretung von Rheinland-Pfalz. Kunst und Kultur spielen bei der Verbindung, bei der Kooperation ebenfalls auch eine sehr, sehr wichtige Rolle. Und Schottland und Rheinland-Pfalz sind auch beide sehr, sehr reich an Traditionen und auch an Geschichte. Ob das Musik ist, ob das Tanz ist, ob das die darstellende Kunst ist, das kreative Schaffen eignet sich eben ganz, ganz hervorragend dafür, dass wir diese Partnerschaft auch über geografische, auch über sprachliche Differenzen hinweg pflegen können und vertiefen können. Seit äh, dem März 2021 gibt es deshalb auch eine Absichtserklärung, eine formelle zur Zusammenarbeit zwischen dem Land Rheinland-Pfalz und der schottischen Regierung. Und diese beinhaltet eben neben Bildung, Wissenschaft und Forschung auch das Themenfeld der Kultur als eine ganz essentielle Grundlage für die gemeinsame ähm, Arbeit. Und wir wollen als Kulturministerium da natürlich eine äh, Rolle spielen, diese Vereinbarung auch mit Leben zu erfüllen. Wir wollen zum Beispiel Künstlerinnen und Künstler weiter darin bestärken, sich auszutauschen, sich zu vernetzen. Ähm, und je mehr Netzwerke auch in Schottland aktiviert werden, je stärker auch die dortige Kulturszene unsere Kooperation lebt, desto besser wird natürlich auch unsere Zusammenarbeit dann in der, Zusammen äh, in der Zukunft ähm, funktionieren. Und dabei ist natürlich auch das Generalkonsulat in Edinburgh ein ganz wichtiger Akteur. Und deshalb freut es mich auch, dass, wenn auch digital, trotzdem die deutsche Generalkonsulin Frau Christiane Hüllmann sich heute eben auch dazu schaltet. Auch das zeigt nochmal, wie wichtig wirklich diese Connections sind. Eine Möglichkeit für mehr Austausch wären sicherlich auch Städtepartnerschaften. Da äh, gibt es bislang leider noch keinen Ort, in Rheinland-Pfalz, der eine Partnerschaft mit einer Gemeinde in Schottland eingegangen ist. Aber auch das kann ja vielleicht ein Thema für die Zukunft sein, dass sich hier ein Tandem findet und eine solche Partnerschaft dann vielleicht in der Zukunft auch entsteht. Ich habe es eben schon angesprochen, auch das gemeinsame keltische Erbe kann natürlich ein Anknüpfungspunkt sein, um die kulturellen Beziehungen miteinander ähm, äh, zu besiedeln, äh, zu, zu äh, vertiefen. Besiedeln kommt jetzt im nächsten Satz, denn große Teile von Rheinland-Pfalz waren früher von Kelten besiedelt. So haben wir etwa auch eine Reihe von Freilichtmuseen wie das Keltendorf am Donnersberg in der Pfalz oder die Keltensiedlung Altburg im Hunsrück, die sich sicherlich hier auch anbieten, um auch Veranstaltungen dort zu machen und gemeinsam zusammenzukommen. Sie sehen also, es gibt neben dem, was bereits besteht, noch viele Dinge, die man andenken kann, wo es eben noch ganz viel Potenzial gibt, um die Beziehungen zu erweitern. Deshalb lassen Sie uns wirklich gemeinsam daran arbeiten, damit diese wirklich fruchtbare Partnerschaft zwischen Rheinland-Pfalz und Schottland noch viele, viele kulturelle Pro äh, Projekte hervorbringt. Und ich habe es eben schon gesagt und es wurde auch eben schon gesagt, einen ersten Vorgeschmack konnten wir wirklich dieses Jahr sehen beim Rheinland-Pfälzischen Kultursommer. Dieser stand in diesem Jahr unter dem Motto Westwärts. Wir haben äh, in den äh, Kultursommer momentan einen vierjährigen Zyklus, wo wir uns in jedem Jahr eine äh, besondere Region von Europa anschauen und die Kultur der dortigen Länder auch präsentieren im Kultursommer. In diesem Jahr war es westwärts, das heißt, wir haben so ein bisschen ja, nach Westen geschaut und äh, UK und Schottland gehörten in diesen Blick mit rein und haben hier vor allen Dingen versucht, viel Kultur, viele Künstlerinnen und Künstler auch aus Schottland ganz gezielt nach Rheinland-Pfalz zu bringen, um eben im Sinne dieser Partnerschaft dann auch den Kultursommer mit Leben zu erfüllen. Und es waren eben ganz tolle, ähm, ganz tolle Veranstaltungen, bei, beispielsweise mit Jörna Five aus Aberdeen, die auch bei der Kultursommereröffnung äh, aufgetreten ist in Trier. Es war ähm, die Kriminalkomödie Die 39 Stufen von John Buchan, die äh, im Koblenzer Theater an Ehren Breitstein aufgeführt wurde oder viele, viele andere Punkte. Und es ist tatsächlich so gewesen, dass alle diese Programmpunkte der schottischen Kultur auch beim Publikum sehr, sehr stark nachgefragt waren und wirklich Veranstaltungen waren, die mit viel Zuspruch einfach auch stattgefunden haben. Und das äh, macht uns doch auch wirklich Mut, dann für die kommenden Jahre auch hier wieder gezielt ähm, nochmal Punkte zu setzen. Es ist eben auch gesagt worden, dass es hier das erste Mal das Scott-Fest gab in diesem Jahr, auch gefördert durch den Kultursommer. Und das wollen wir eben auch äh, weiterführen in den nächsten Jahren. Ja, in diesem Sinne ähm, möchte ich an der Stelle auch mich einfach noch mal ganz, ganz herzlich bedanken. Ich habe es ganz am Anfang gesagt, äh, der Scotland Hub ist hier wirklich eigentlich Dreh- und Angelpunkt, war auch für uns als Kulturministerium einfach der Ansprechpartner, den wir brauchten, 
um äh, hier auch die Beziehungen entsprechend aufnehmen zu können. Und deshalb möchte ich mich an dieser Stelle noch mal ganz, ganz herzlich bei allen, die am im, um den Scotland Hub drumherum aktiv sind, bedanken für das ganz, ganz tolle Engagement, was hier an den Tag gelegt wird, was eben zeigt, wir sind mit Herzblut dabei bei dieser Partnerschaft und wir können hier an dieser Stelle aber auch in der Zukunft noch ganz, ganz viel machen. Vielen Dank. Soll ich loslegen? Hört man mich? Gut, dann, ähm, dann, dann lege ich los. Äh, ja, dir Professor Emich, dir Minister Binz, ähm, dir ähm, äh, Dr. Rivards, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for the invitation to speak to you tonight at your St. Andrew's Day's celebration and lecture. Um, I arrived four months ago here in Edinburgh as a German Consul General from Berlin. And I must say that I consider myself very lucky to work in this beautiful part of Europe. As you all know, as Scotland lovers, this is an exciting place to live. Dramatic landscapes and wonderful old cities and towns, first-class universities, lots of live music, etc. But the most important reason why Scotland impresses us so much are its people, warm and welcoming, open-minded, positive, and very sociable. Since my arrival, I've met hundreds of people, probably already a thousand, have visited schools and universities. And it struck me how often Mainz and your university uh, were mentioned. It was really Mainz all over. And then in October, I had the immense pleasure to meet you, Dr. Rivers, here in Edinburgh. And all of a sudden, I understood that background and how broad the activities and programs are and why my is indeed a real, uh, Mainz is indeed a real Scotland hub. I can't emphasize enough how impressed I am by what has been achieved in terms of German-Scottish relations under your leadership, Dr. Rivers, and with the help of your colleagues. And I would like to wholeheartedly thank also the government of Rheinland-Pfalz for its immense support. It's very good to see that also on the government level, there are intensive contact with Scotland. The visit of Prime Minister Malu Dreyer and her delegation this spring was highly appreciated here. And the memorandum of understanding, which uh, you minister mentioned between Rheinland-Pfalz and Scotland, gives an excellent framework for the cooperation in many fields. It is very regrettable that at the moment we are facing certain difficulties with the GET uh, program, which, as was explained, brings students uh, from Germany here to Scotland to work as teaching assistants, and um, which is, uh, has, is, um, has difficulties right now because of challenges um, regarding visa requirements due to Brexit. But we hope very much that there will be a solution found uh, in the future, ideally a general youth mobility scheme, so that the program can be resumed um, uh, in, in, in presence. It is a program which indeed is benefiting everyone, the students, the schools, and the German-Scottish relations. Just yesterday, when I visited the Bishop Briggs schools in Glasgow, teachers praised the GET students they had in the past. Um, before closing and thanking you again for all your work, I would like to stress that my colleagues and I here at the German Council Consulate are very happy to help wherever we can and support your manifold activities. And I hope to see very many of you in Scotland soon. And please don't hesitate when you're here um, to contact me or my colleagues um, and, 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 and tell me about what you are doing here 
um, I'm very interested in that and very happy about everything that's going on between Mind, Mainz, Rheinland-Pfalz, your university and Scotland. Now, I wish you all a wonderful evening with Kilts, Wine and Spundekes, and I hope also a Kaylee. Goodbye from Scotland and see you soon.
Oh, thank you, Jenny. That was truly beautiful. And what a privilege to be here and be able to hear you perform. Thank you. Also, um, uh, Siegfried hat mir dazu geraten, da wir hier St. Andrew's Day feiern, diese Rede auf Englisch oder gar Schottisch uh, zu machen. Also hoffe ich, dass Sie alle es mir verzeihen werden, wenn ich ins Englisch wechsle. Ich bin eigentlich erst seit August hier in Deutschland. Daher vermute ich, dass euer Englisch viel besser als mein Deutsch ist. My dear friends and colleagues, um, dear Frau Minister Binz, uh, dear Staatssekretär Hadek, um, dear Professor Rotlauf, Professor Emig, Professor Rieberts, um, dear General Consulin Holman, um, joining us from afar, um, dear Frau Kummermeer and, and colleagues from the Ministry of Science and Health. It gives me enormous pleasure to be here with you all today from the Schottische Regierungsvertretung in Deutschland uh, to celebrate St Andrew's Day, the feast of the patron saint of Scotland. By the way, I don't know if you know, but St Andrew is also the patron saint of singers. Um, and I think you'll agree that if he assisted just now in Jenny Sturgeon's performance, then he's definitely doing his job. Um, St Andrew's Day, as you know, is a, a very special day for me and for the people of Scotland, and not only because it's traditionally celebrated with a public holiday, so we all get a day off work. Um, the connection between Scotland and St Andrew goes all the way back to the fourth century, no, to Greece in the fourth century. So, according to legend, at that time, um, the bones of the saint were being housed in Patras um, in modern day Greece. And an angel appeared in a dream to a local monk, St. Rule, and told him to take the bones of St. Andrew to the ends of the earth for safekeeping. Um, so, St. Rule took these sacred relics and he set sail only to be shipwrecked at the ends of the earth, that is to say, in Fife, which is on the east coast of Scotland, about 30 miles up the road from my home in Edinburgh. Um, I don't know, incidentally, if I would call Fife the ends of the earth, um, but I, I, I do know that, um, uh, as we heard earlier, Jenny is from Shetland, um, as she says, in the Hoch Nord of, um, of Scotland, and that really is the ends of the earth. Anyway, so St. Rule brought the relics of St. Andrew to Scotland, um, and even today, actually, you can see um, St. Rule's Tower, which was built um, by Irish Culdy monks on the site where he was shipwrecked. Uh, one of the many connections, incidentally, that Scotland shares with Ireland. Um, and I believe that we have with us Aaron Reen um, here today from the Irish Consulate in Frankfurt. Um, so it's a pleasure to, to have him celebrating with us here today as well. So a town grew up um, around the bones of the saint and was named after him. And that is St Andrews, which is famous now for its university and also as the birthplace of golf, as some of you may know. Um, I'm sure that some of you here will have visited St Andrews and will know what a very beautiful place it is. And we were pleased and honoured to have Minister President Malu Dreyer um, see it for herself when she visited Scotland earlier this year. And we hope, Minister and Vince, um, that you might have the chance to see it for yourself, perhaps um, next year or the year after. 
Um, you can still see the relics of St Andrew um, in Scotland. Um, they're no longer in the town of St Andrews. They're in fact now in the wonderful St Mary's Cathedral um, in central Edinburgh, just down the road from Waverley Station, which incidentally was my church before I moved to Berlin. Um, but the town of St Andrews itself has a special significance for me personally, and actually a, a special Deutsch significance, because it was the place where I first felt a, a besondere Verbindung uh, mit der, der deutschen Sprache. So I was a 14 year old schoolgirl um, just getting ready to sit my exams, and our German assistant in Sonja Lübeck took me to St Andrews for a German reading competition, actually organised by the Goethe Institute in Scotland. Um, I remember I had to read a passage called Die Beamten uh, by Peter Bixel, um, little realising at the time that I was going to end up being a Beamten myself. Um, and I did actually, I won a prize, um, which Frau Lübeck celebrated with me by buying me some of the very famous ice cream that is also made in St Andrews. And that was the day when German officially became my favourite language. Um, and actually, since then, I always hoped that I would one day have the chance to live and work in Germany. Um, and I got my wish in September this year when I took over from the fantastic Dr. Alexandra Stein, who some of you may know um, as head of the Schottische Regierungsvertretung in Germany. Um, and actually, um, and I'll say a bit more about this later, but it is always in my mind that I want other school children in Scotland to have those same opportunities that I had to get to know and to love the German language. So I'm really delighted to be celebrating my first St Andrews Day in Germany and besonders in Rheinland-Pfalz. Um, so of all the German lender, it seems to me that the connection between Scotland and Rheinland-Pfalz is particularly special. Obviously, Scotland has links with many lenders, so with Niedersachsen on clean energy, with Bayern on Raumfahrt, with Baden-Württemberg on environmental protection and so on. But there is no land in Germany, it seems to me, with which we share such a close cultural connection as with our friends here in Rheinland-Pfalz. Uh, and actually, the fact that you were all here today to celebrate our national day, um, to me, is testament to that. So the University of Mainz, of course, has the only faculty in Germany which offers Scottish studies. Um, the Absichtserklärung that the minister mentioned earlier with, um, that Scotland and Rheinland-Pfalz signed together in 2021, um, uniquely among our um, Absichtserklärungen with German Länder is focused on culture and research and education. Um, as I think has also already been mentioned, we share a love of good whiskey and good wine. And actually we even have our own Schloss Balmoral, which was one of our late Queen's favorite residences. And I must, of course, mention what a unique friend um, Scotland has in uh, Professor Sigrid Rivertz, who I think has done more to advance Scotland's interests in Germany than probably any German since Theodor Fontana. <laughs> and that's a fact that our, our former First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, recognised last year when um, uh, Professor Rivertz uh, was awarded the Constanza Conseils Prize. I know that that special relationship is going to continue to flourish in coming years um, and we've got some upcoming events to look forward to. So in January, the Scottish Universities Life Sciences Alliance will visit Rheinland-Pfalz with representatives from 12 Scottish universities and we hope also a Scottish minister yet to be confirmed. Um, we expect to see a third call for applications under our joint scotland rheinland pfalz uh, Biotechnology and Research Fund, which this year saw six early career researchers receive awards. Um, and of course, the highlight of my calendar next summer will be the annual Scotfest, so a programme of Scottish themed events that's run by the University of Mines and fun, uh, funded through the Kultur Sommer programme, of which we've heard a little bit um, tonight. Um, actually, almost the very last engagement in, um, in Germany that my Vorgängerin, Dr Alexander Stein, um, undertook was to go to this year's Gowald Festival. So I'm looking forward to getting my turn next summer at Go Mensch, um, when the University of Mainz will partner with the University of Glasgow. I'm sure that will be a fantastic event. In addition, um, there are a number of new initiatives um, that the Scottish Government is taking forward um, back home in Scotland, and which I believe will contribute to preserving that special relationship between Scotland and Rheinland Pfalz. So tomorrow, um, to mark St Andrew's Day, the Scottish Government is launching a new global online community where people with Scottish connections can sign up. So it's a place where people with ties to Scotland can come together and um, be in community with each other. So that does mean people with Scottish heritage, but to my mind, even more importantly, it means people who have a living connection to Scotland, whether that's professionally, through their education, or just through their love of Scotland. 
in other words, people exactly like you here in this room who've taken the time to come together to celebrate your affection for Scotland um, on the, the eve of Scotland's National Day. So I'll make sure that the link to this new online community gets circulated once it launches. And I very much hope that many of you may choose to register for it and get news and information about Scotland sent directly to you. So we want to build a community linked by Scottish connections. And as we say in Scotland, we're also putting our money where our mouth is by making funding available for international projects which build links to Scotland. And I was delighted to see, in fact, that the Scotland Hub here in the University of Mainz has applied for a slice of that funding for a proposed Teaching Scotland programme. And that would aim to increase the visibility of Scotland in secondary schools here in Rhineland Fuds. The funding announcement should be made early next month. And I obviously wish the university every success with that. And finally, and as I mentioned earlier, um, we know there's nothing more important for the future of those shared cultural connections um, between Scotland and Germany than helping our young people to experience each other's countries, cultures and languages. And I know, Siegfried, that that's something that's very close to your heart and how much of a role you and the Get Set Go programme have played in supporting the teaching of German in Scottish schools. And that, like so many things, has got a lot harder since Brexit. Um, but I am really delighted, actually, this very week to see that the teaching of German, uh, German in Scottish schools is shooting up the political agenda. And there have been a number of um, articles about it in Scottish newspapers earlier this week. Um, and I am determined that my office will play our part in keeping up that momentum back at home. And earlier this year, the Scottish Government also announced a Scottish Education Exchange Programme in the spirit of Erasmus, which uh, we, we were very sad to leave, to encourage staff and student mobility to Scotland. Um, so a test and learn phase has already begun um, with the aim of gathering learning ahead of a wider rollout. And I hope that in the near future, the findings from that test and learn phase will help to bring a new generation of German language teachers and assistants to Scotland so that more Scottish children can have the opportunities that I was blessed with 20 years ago in St Andrews. So on this, the eve of St Andrew's Day, let me thank you all once again for being here to enjoy this very special occasion. I couldn't have wished for a lovelier first visit to Heinlein Fels, and I hope it will just be one of many memorable days that we will celebrate together in the future. Hello, everybody. Uh, Mrs. Bintz, uh, Mr. Hadek, Mrs. Hullman, Mrs. Sweeves, and Mrs. Sturgeon, ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues. It's five to seven. You're all here because of the music. <laughs> and now we have got somebody from the uh, presidium who wants to talk to you and tell you some stories and about the, the close relationship between Mainz and um, Scotland. I don't know if you really want this. You probably want to, 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 you want me to be as fast as possible, but I will try my very best to be brief and to, to hand over the stage then in four minutes uh, to Chen. First of all, what is the CIO? I'm here as CIO of the university, and the CIO is uh, in the uh, in the presidium, the board of directors responsible for information technology and digital processes. Though probably the opposite of culture and all the things and wine that we have all the way in, but perhaps necessary to build up an international app where people can sign in and connect worldwide to to Scotland and. Of course, also responsible for stuff like this that 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 perhaps uh, by in, by accident uh, caused by Corona, we have the chance to really see ourselves uh, sitting in Edinburgh and sitting in Mainz via stuff like Teams or Zooms via online communication. So I will skip a lot of the things that I see on my on my paper, and I want to say I want to look at three aspects. Uh, the first thing is, uh, and, and I want to look at the ties between uh, the Johannes Gutenberg University and Scotland. And the first thing is about Scotland and, J and JGU. And the connection between uh, Scotland and Mainz uh, goes back uh, for more than 40 years. It also has been mentioned again already in 81, though, though more than 40 years ago, there was a Scottish study centre uh, was set in the English department a long way ago. I probably assume you haven't been there in 81. 
And it was established as an international center for interdisciplinary research and teaching and resulted meanwhile in a lot of, I think, more than 50 academic publications, which is really currency for the, for the research folks at universities. And uh, right from the start, really, the JGU uh, teamed up with the University of Scotland. And also these institutional and other personal ties helped us to promote a culture of exchange. And despite Brexit, or perhaps we can say all Brexit, our now we need we are very lucky to see that the, the Scottish people that they they feel they have a feel of belonging to, to a large European Union and they don't want to be divorced from all these European friends and that, and we, we like this, and we all want to, therefore to, to tighten the bridge between uh, two institutions or between Scotland and Germany. And another facet of our involvement and support is also the German language and culture in Scotland. We have already heard that that's an important that we bring the German culture and the German language to Scotland. And uh, almost 10 years ago, we, we set up this Get Z Go Go program. Uh, which was initiated in cooperation with the national, with the Scotland's National Centre for Language and with support of the German consular journalism. The second aspect I want to talk about is about Scotland and teaching. And in our teaching education Scotland is really impressive. Initiated by Professor Emig, our university is the only one in Germany with British studies, as we have already heard, is taught from the perspective of all four nations. Ah, nations. We are expressing nation and not country, that's fine. So we, we have not only England, but we have also the Scottish, uh, the Welsh, uh, and the Irish. And what we are also looking forward is uh, to setting up also the first master uh, uh, in on Scottish uh, studies in Germany, which is, of course, a, a difficult thing, but we are looking forward to setting up. And of course, also Scotland is in the true focus of our internalization of our education and we have got several programs uh, where we teach our teachers to teach English in Scotland. The third aspect is a more private thing. And I was preparing for the for meeting here and said, okay, let's say a few words about how uh, how to introduce this. But I thought about it about pretty close relationships on a on a scientific level because two of my close colleagues I've been working now for almost 10 years uh, together. And the first is uh, Emma. Emma Hart is a professor in Edinburgh, and she's a professor in computer science. So we both are working together in some international research organization. And perhaps you know ACM, that's our computer science and stuff. And I've been chairing these one of these special interest groups, and she has been treasurer and my vice chair for many years. And the cooperation was very nice, and, and we worked good together, which also resulted in some years ago where we ran the, the, the largest international conference in this field of evolution computation in Edinburgh. And that was a nice experience in Edinburgh, and also the, all the researchers from all over the world, it was an 800 people conference, really enjoyed being there. And the second thing also, uh, Gabi, Gabriela Ochoa, she's a professor in Stirling, and She's uh, working on fitness landscapes and all the computer science stuff, and they've been working there for some, some years ago. And because of internet technology, distance is, doesn't really matter. And uh, we 
wants to dedicate some of the stuff with him is very similar. And then I sent one of my PhD students to uh, Sterling for, I think, for three or four months. And based also on this uh, working together, we build up a cooperation. And, and with regular exchange, with, with regular exchange and uh, another, uh, one other student of mine recently here in Sterling. And on the outcome, we also have some more publications <laughs> where you find Scottish and German authors. Uh, on computer science, no? so it's not only about the language and culture, but we also have reasons to work together on stuff like that. I have only five minutes, so I'm over. Uh, I only want to, before you can continue listening to Jenny again, I want to thank all the organizers, uh, including Dr. Markus Hebner, who has been involved in the preparation, Sigrid uh, Wiewitz, whose passion for Scotland, I think, is very obvious. And I also thank all the team and all the, all the professors here at the university and, and the full team who has been working on this event, many events. So, and now, my five minutes are over, I go back and you all want to change. Thanks for being here. In Scotland, we should always put the wrap on the end of the night. See the wrap on the end of the night. See the wrap on the end of the night. Yeah, I'm going to sing you a selection of songs. First one is an adaptation of a Nan Shepherd poem all about sitting in love. And, and I imagine probably Graham. Relevant today because it's so cold. Glad to be up in Thank you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Well, COVID, it was quite a strict, like, just strange time for everybody. Even new vision, but then all of a sudden there was new work. Deleted from the diary, from the gig, from the traveling trip. It was a very harsh time. I got to see Madden vegetables. It's Musicians were asked to write a response to what people brought in. It must have been about 200 different entries. Uh, some people chose to write a song or a tune based on one or two things, and to read through everything before making a decision on what to do. So I looked at absolutely everything that people had done. And Poetry or a story, I took a line or a phrase from that. And if it was a painting, I wrote the first thing that came into my head when I saw that painting. And uh, basically, I hugely plagiarized other people's work for this song. And uh, it was called Church Lines. Every single line is an inspiration from a different.
Over me, be the glass white shiver, sing an over stone, so quick, so clear, a hundred years. Sing on song, Lord, sing on song. From crystal sources fed forever, old mountain springs to or persuade the haunted ear. He hates the tune and sings, he hates the tune it sings. From heights on high. The unselect reach, a voice rings from the well, and it seeps through stone and roots and feet, where the living mountains dwell, where the living mountains dwell. From craggy peak arms linked together, Speed and force to carve and cut and wear away. Change rules by changing force. Change rules by changing force. From high plateau to lowland plain, spring she sees it all. I'm singing loud to spread the word. Plants can't keep flood waters in, keep flood waters in. Over me, we get the less white sugar. Sing over stone, so quick. So clear a hundred years. Sing on song, Lord. Sing on song, Sit in the tree outside. 
tree shut down, but I see the tree, it's more of a shrub. It's anything that you look over this height. I was sitting in this tree, front bar, out to the window, sitting for hours. Sent it to a friend of mine, a bird song. I said it was really interesting because here we have in Shetland quite many small songbirds. Things that the macaw blackbirds in Shetland are really simple. Here, it's the blackbird in the air. So many more birds in this than take inspiration from. In Shetland, they're just so I wrote a song, um, I don't really like to write love songs, but um, Which is 
actually a slow translation of the words is big feather asked from an unknown people onwards along the far shore of the south and the ether has up and left you languidly flowing near heaven words you borrow as you go nothing but the dark waves that poem totally within the spot Waited into Shetland dialect by Suzanne Watt, her other daughter. Yeah, 
and Glass, thank you so much for listening to me this evening. It's such a special thing to get to come to the Open Glass to meet so many of you and to the team who organised this event. And you can feel so welcome to Kenny, Don, and everyone else who's been involved. Thank you very much. And of course, to Sylvia and Hans for making me so welcome and putting me up in their house and feeding me wonderful food and generally being fantastic. I think they all need a round of applause.